Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about weight and balance. Now, have you ever been sitting in an aircraft, seeing a nice empty seat row ahead of you, thinking, I'm just going to move over there, and then having a cabin crew tell you that you're not allowed because of weight and balance? Well, today I'm going to explain why it is so important that especially during takeoff and landing, the aircraft is well within defined center of um, gravity limits. And I'm going to tell you what happens if you go outside of these limits. So stay tuned. Point three, one, zero, one, six, seven, right, seven, right. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, the reason that you are here watching this video is because you are a curious person. You want to learn about something new. And Brilliant.org is a fantastic tool for helping you do exactly that. They do it using nice interactive courses in different areas. Like for example, today you'll be able to go into a course helping you to learn about natural science, about science and how to actually use weight and balance in everyday life. But it's also likely that the reason that you're watching this is because a computer algorithm inside of YouTube have told you that you should be watching this. Now, how do these algorithms work? Well, we have a computer science course within um, Brilliant as well, and it will help you to start thinking like a computer scientist. How does a uh, algorithm actually work? And how could you start coding? Not in a boring way, but in an actual interesting and interactive way. Those of you who use this link here below, you will be able to get a whopping 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant and you can start learning today. So check it out, do it now. Right guys, um, so weight and balance is a hugely complex uh, subject. It is one of those subjects that will take a lot of effort from you when you do your ATPL exams as pilots. Uh, it will have you going through loads of different formulas. This is why it's so important that you understand maths before you start your training. And you'll be looking through these really, really complex diagrams, thinking, well, depending on where the load is situated in the aircraft, are you within or outside of the center of gravity limits? But that's not what we're going to be doing today. What I want to do in this episode is I want to get you, the passengers, to, to really understand how important it is to, to actually be inside of these limits and why there are limits in the first place. So the first thing we're going to do is you need to understand that there is, on an aircraft, just like any other object, has a center of gravity. Now the center of gravity, um, the easiest way to explain it is the point at where you can kind of think that the entire mass of the object is situated, okay? So it's basically where you can put one finger and hold up the object like this. This is the center of gravity, okay? Now, of course, if you were to design an aircraft to fly where you had to have the center of gravity and the weight co-located uh, with the center of lift all the time, it would be very unstable, as you can see here. So if you be sitting on your seat and wanting to go to the toilet, well that, that would be a problem. Now, obviously, the aircraft that we're flying today are not constructed like that, right? We have to construct the aircraft to be able to take some shifts in the load. Um, for example, we all know that after dinner has been served on a long haul flight, it takes about 20 minutes and then there's a huge queue of people and passengers standing at the toilets, okay? Now, in order for an aircraft to be able to take those kind of load shifts, it means that there needs to be a margin within where the aircraft can be easily operated, even though the load is shifting. And the way that we've done that is we have added uh, something onto an aircraft called the horizontal stabilizer, right? The back wing, good. So an aircraft basically has its center of gravity and behind the center of gravity you have the center of lift. This is where the, all of the lift from the wing is, is centered. And because there's a difference between where you have your center of gravity and where you have your center of lift, it means that the center of lift is going to affect the aircraft by pushing the nose down. 
So if we didn't have an opposite force to that, it means that the aircraft would never come off the ground, right? The aircraft nose would be constantly pushed downwards. So in order to counteract that, we have a small wing at the back of the aircraft, the horizontal stabilizer, that creates an opposite lift, right? The lift coming from the, uh, the, the horizontal stabilizer is actually going downwards. And because you have a downwards force at the back, that will cause a upwards momentum of the nose, while the center of lift, which is a much, much bigger force, but it's closer to the center of gravity, is causing a downward movement of the nose. With me so far? Now, by having that, it means that small changes in the, uh, the position of the horizontal stabilizer can counteract big changes in weight. So as passengers are moving around the cabin, as we're burning up fuel, for example, and the fuel actually will have an effect on the center of gravity, well then we will just change the trim setting on our uh, stabilizer to counteract those forces and keep the aircraft under control, right? This is the, a very, very simple explanation to why we have to have that back wing in, in the first place. So then, what would happen if we were, for example, putting too many passengers in the front of the aircraft? Well then, what would happen is that the center of gravity would move outside of the defined limits, right? The center of gravity would move forward since we have more passengers sitting towards the front. And it means that the momentum arm to the, uh, uh, to the center of lift, which is not changing, is going to become bigger. Um, which means that the aircraft will be very, very hard to get off the ground. As the aircraft is accelerating down the runway, we try to rotate, the aircraft might not be able to rotate or we don't have enough elevator uh, authority to control the aircraft in the pitch. Okay, so it's become very, very, very stable in flight. You know, it might not be, we might not be able to control it or you might not get off the ground in the first place. That's if you have the weight too far forward, okay? But a similar thing happens if you have too much weight towards the back of the aircraft. So if you take all of the passengers from the front and you move them towards the back during takeoff and landing, well then you have the problem of the center of gravity moving too close to the center of lift. Now this will make the aircraft very fiddly. Right? It will make it uh, that, that stability that we were talking about before, because of that change in the momentum arm. The momentum arm is now very, very small, which means that the aircraft might start to rotate way before that we're ready for it during the takeoff roll when we don't have enough speed for the aircraft to fly. Or it could even end up with the aircraft sitting itself down on the tail, tipping. You would have seen this happening on pictures from especially cargo aircraft where someone inexperienced have been loading the aircraft by filling it up in the back first and just within seconds without them having any way to stop it the aircraft starts sitting back on its tail and once it's on its tail it's going to be very very complicated to safely get it down again without moving the, uh, the um, cargo inside. So that might look funny but it's not a good thing and if it is not as bad as in as it's not actually tipping but it is very very um, nose light then as we get airborne the aircraft is going to be very very sensitive with pitch changes so if we start moving the elevator in any little way we're going to get much bigger movement than we wanted to um, and it's not a safe way to fly so this means that it's a very very kind of um, set space within which where we can both control the aircraft, we can rotate it when we want, and we can fly it in a safe way. Now, the way that we control this is, for example, by controlling where you guys, the passengers, are sitting. So um, when you buy your, uh, your ticket, if you don't choose a specific seat, well then you are going to be allocated a seat. And the way that the program allocates this is by spreading the uh, passengers out evenly. So if someone sits in the front, there's another one sitting in the back, and have as many people as possible sitting towards the center of the cabin. Now if the aircraft is full, that's not a problem, because that means that the weight is equally distributed anyway. But if the aircraft is half full, that's where you might see that a lot of people sitting towards the center of the aircraft, and even though there are nice spots available both in the front and the back of the aircraft, you're not allowed to move to those spaces, because the more away 
you move from the center of gravity, the bigger momentum arm you will have and the bigger trim and effect you will have on the center of gravity of the aircraft. Now the same goes for, uh, for cargo. Uh, when we load cargo, we can do it either by bulk loading, which we do on the 737, that's uh, by taking individual bags and throwing them into the holds. There are several different holds available on the 737. Each of them have very defined how many bags is allowed to be in each hold, and they're separated by barriers to make sure that not, if something happens, if we get a lot of turbulence during the flight, that not bags are starting to shift inside. Now, the other way of loading is by using containers. And containers is the same thing. The containers have to have a specific maximum weight and you can have a specific number of containers in specific part of the hold in order to make sure that the aircraft is nicely loaded. Now, once the aircraft is loaded with passengers and with, with the cargo, um, we check that the aircraft is within the zero fuel weight uh, balance limit. And then we add fuel to that. And of course the fuel, which is situated in the wings or in the center tank, will also be slightly out of sync with the center of gravity. So as we're burning fuel, the aircraft is, is, uh, is flying along, then the center of gravity will move as the fuel is being used as well. So we have to make sure that as we have you know, the, the, the sort of fuel weight is within limit and the maximum takeoff weight is also within limit. So there's several different weights and several different scenarios where the pilots need to make sure that we are within our weight and balance limits. Okay? Right. So, so how do we do this in practice then? Well, in practice, like I said, you guys have gotten your allocated seat number. You adhere to your allocated seat number, especially during takeoff and landing. The reason it's so important during takeoff and landing specifically is because that's where our speeds are the lowest and that's also where we are in contact with the ground. So we have to make sure that we can control the aircraft well in lower speeds. As the speed builds up, when we're airborne, for example, the uh, authority of the elevator um, and the stabilizer will become much bigger, increase in speed, and you're not likely to tail strike, for example, when you're in the air. So during the air, while you're airborne, it's kind of okay to move around a little bit, move seats, but as you get closer to the runway, when we're about to land, it becomes equally important that you're sitting where you're supposed to be. Now, before we go, the pilots will get what we call a load sheet. So they look differently for different airlines, but they contain information about where you guys are seated. Now, we can use either our manuals with those really, really complex diagrams that we have to follow to find out that we're in limits, or nowadays we normally do it with a laptop computer or with an iPad or something like that, where we input where you guys are seated, you know, how many adults we have, how many children we have, because they have different weights, how many um, infants we have, because the infant weight is included in the adult weight they're traveling with. We put that in, where you guys are sitting in the aircraft, and then we put in how much cargo and how much uh, baggage we have, where that baggage is, and how much fuel we have, how much fuel we'll be burning. And once all of that is inputted into our computer, well, then we can see exactly where the center of gravity is and we can see it together with the diagram showing what the limitations are. So you can see, okay, with this type of, of passenger load and baggage load we have, we are well within the approved area, so we're okay to go. We will get our trim setting because the trim setting, you know, those big wheels that are moving inside of the 737, uh, has to be within a green area on the stabilizer trim setting. So we set it, make sure that that's the case. It's generally between five and maybe six and a half units of stabilizer trim. And if it is there, we know that the aircraft will be fully controllable during the takeoff roll, during the rotation, during the liftoff, and later on during the landing. We will also know that we are not above our maximum takeoff weight, which is a structural limit, that we are within our performance which is a different kind of calculation that we do at the same time, and that we're not above our maximum landing weight and the weight of balance for landing as well. So all of these calculations are done when we get the load sheet from the, um, from the dispatcher or the load controller. The captain will verify that everything looks okay. I will sign it. I will give a copy of the load sheet to the dispatcher so that in case something were to happen, there is a copy left on the ground so that can be verified later on in a, in a later investigation. Uh, and then 
Once all of it is done, we will close up the aircraft and we'll be on our way. So taking care of the load sheet and making sure that the weight of balance is within limits is kind of the last thing that we do. If there's a change to this, if someone were, for example, to ask if they can move seat, I can go in and I can do a last minute change. I can check within my computer that if I move one passenger from the center of the cabin to the front to the back of the cabin, that that doesn't take us out of limit. But this is extremely important, guys. Okay. Now, um, one, <laughs> one thing that can happen, which is kind of funny, which is not related to takeoff and landing, but has to do with disembarkation, um, is, for example, if we're using um, an air bridge. So if you're disembarking an aircraft using an air bridge, it means that you'll be disembarking through the front exits only, normally at least when you're flying a short to medium haul. Now, in the winter, when people have a lot of jackets and maybe they bought a lot of presents that they have in the hand luggage, they are unlikely to start standing up and putting on their jackets until they see that the other people are starting to move. So what can happen then, and what I've actually seen very close to happening, is that the people at the back of the aircraft, they see that it's a long time until they get to disembark. So they sit in their seats, while the front of the aircraft is starting to empty out. So what you have now is a situation where the back of the aircraft is full of passengers sitting in their seats, and the front of the aircraft is starting to empty out. And as I was just explaining before, when you have that, the center of gravity is now starting to move. And when it moves far enough, there is a risk of tipping. I have actually been doing fuel monitoring, which is where we stand outside during boarding and, and um, disembarkation as the aircraft is being fueled. And I've looked at the nose gear and seen that the, the nose gear strut is just starting to extend more and more and we have procedures for this when i see that happening i contact the remaining pilot which is in the cockpit and i say stop the disembarkation stop people because what happens then is if you stop people from leaving air, there will be a queue that's starting to form in the front of the aircraft which means that the weight is now shifting back towards the front and then once enough people are starting to move from the back you can start letting people disembark again but it just goes to show that weight and balance is something that we need to keep track of even during the disembarkation because of course the aircraft is standing on their two main landing gears and the nose gear there's nothing in the back there's nothing that actually is there to to maintain the balance now you might have seen on some aircraft that there is kind of a uh, like a, um, a pillar, like a little staff that some smaller aircraft have in order to avoid this from happening. But on larger aircraft like the 77, the Airbus uh, 320 or bigger than that, you won't have anything that stops it in case it starts tipping. Because you, in theory, need to have so many passengers in the wrong place for that to happen that it's unlikely to happen. But tipping during disembarkation is a risk and it needs to be procedures for it. And uh, yeah, that's all I had. I hope to see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app as always. It's free to download. You have the link to it down here. There's loads of aviation enthusiasts, people who are nervous flyers and professional pilots like myself who are there to answer your questions. So go check out the forums, check out the, um, the uh, chat, and also consider getting yourself a uh, collection. That's where I, in glorious 360 format, will be showing you how to set up, how to fly the 737NG in things like wind shear escape maneuvers, TCAS maneuvers, engine failures after takeoff, how to use the checklist, and much, much more. So check it out, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.